It's so rare to see something genuinely new in a phone these days that I'd say it counts as a legendary pull when you get a device that not only has a fresh new trick up its sleeve, but that also happens to hit the fastest benchmark scores we've ever tested. And if you're like me and you've been dreaming of a flagship phone that has old school cool features like a headphone jack, a bumpless camera, and a giant battery, there is so much more to love about Red Magic, who sponsored this video for us to show off the Red Magic 11 Pro, the world's first mass produced liquid cooled phone, and more importantly, maybe, to tear it apart so we can get a good look at how they managed to pack teeny tiny water cooling into a phone that looks like this and not ugh, like this. Teardown step one. Heat up the back to soften the adhesive that holds on the Gorilla Glass backing. Oh, buddy. Step two. Correct Red Magic's biggest blunder with this device. The fact that they covered up any of this liquid cooling loop. Like, dude, even the ones with the transparent window in the back, they don't show all of it. How flipping cool is this? Seriously though, in Jerry Rig Everything's video, he tears down the transparent back one, and all this coverage of the loop here is just a sticker. That is like the first thing that I would take out. I gotta assume that's there for shielding or compliance or something. Cause like, damn. Oh, look at that. I can move the liquid around myself. Okay, so next up, let's pull up this. Oh, interesting. Protective film. And then, Next, the Qi charging coil is cable managed into the cooling loop sticker. Hold on one sec. This is wild, dude. I've seen ideas like this, concepts. I have never seen this in a production phone. There it is. That is thinner than a playing card. And yes, that is real liquid. The pump is right there. There is one thing that I can't overlook here, and that is that the water cooling system, realistically, is not doing a lot of cooling. It's just maybe moving heat around a little bit. The main cooling is being done by the two other cooling systems that are integrated into this phone. Red Magic boasts that they've integrated the phone industry's largest vapor chamber ever, and assisting it is this 24,000 RPM fan. The fan we can see now, but to get a look at the vapor chamber, we're gonna have to go quite a bit deeper. By the way, as I'm removing these screws, you guys might have noticed a little bit of uh, <clears throat> background noise. That's because we've got this bad boy running 3D Mark Wildlife in the background so that we can have the fan running and the liquid circulating as we tear down our device. And uh, <clears throat> you might have noticed that at full tilt, you will hear that fan if you aren't using headphones. Though, of course, you will be using headphones. I mean, you don't want to be that guy on the bus, do you? And besides, it's just so convenient. Headphone jacks, man. Bring them back. With the camera cover removed, we reach a critical element of the cooling system. And this one is not just for show. See, the SOC that's at the heart of the Red Magic 11 Pro is the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5, an eight core beast with an Adreno 840 GPU that improves both traditional raster and ray traced performance, contributing to big gains over Red Magic's last gen devices. <laughs> but also in the highest performance profile, some pretty serious heat in applications that are designed to draw maximum power, like repeated runs of 3D Mark's wildlife stress test. We're talking with Red Magic about it, but in a nutshell, they might need to run the fan a little higher to keep device surface temperatures under control once this thing hits the market. And that really should help in a big way because you can see this cooling element with the fan and an intake some thermal compound and an exhaust should go a long way towards cooling our SOC right here. <laughs> that is so cool. With all that said, we only saw the surface temperatures go so high in power viruses. Most mobile games are FPS capped, meaning that power consumption shouldn't be able to run wild. Life. So why don't we see how things go in COD Mobile? First things first, fire up game mode, and then I guess, yeah, let's go straight to multiplayer so I can show off my terrible mobile gaming skills. 
All right, wow, Kingslayer. If only I wasn't playing against bots that are designed to make me feel better and uh, take my money. Oh my God, look how awesome so I am. Good. I should buy so many cosmetics right now. Score streak is ready. Right there, boom. Well, that was bound to happen, but I can't blame the device. 520 Hertz pulling rate triggers, 144 Hertz display. It really moves a fair bit of air, doesn't it? <laughs> That's really cool. Okay, I'm gonna try and get one more kill. Ah, screwed up. Now I can keep screwing up this phone by unscrewing the rest of the screws with this LTT Precision Screwdriver from LTTStore.screw. Sorry, I mean LTTScrew.com. LTTStore.com, oh damn it. We've got a great look right now at the triple camera setup. There's dual 50 megapixel rear cameras as well as a two megapixel camera for calculating distance and a quad LED flash. And now it's gone. See you later, buddy. <laughs> it's nice knowing you. What's not gone though is the front camera. You might've noticed this earlier. See that? No camera cutout, no dynamic island. Just some pixels on the screen that are lower density so that when you fire up the front camera, you shoot through them. Is it the sharpest front facing camera in the world? No, but is your screen not interrupted by ugly, unsightly holes? Yes. As for the rear cameras, David's gonna go take some shots outside. We'll let you guys be the judge. I don't wanna let any subjectivity get into this because this is a sponsored video. What isn't subjective is the lack of a camera bump. Now, I suspect for Red Magic, this is really more about gaming comfort. But for me, it's just nice that they're using the whole depth of the device for their cameras here, which allows me to just put my phone down flat on a surface without freaking it wobbling all over the place when I wanna interact with it. You can see they're like really using the entire depth here. Since we're in here, now's a great time to get a better look at the backside of our Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5's cooling and the up to 24 gigabytes of LPDDR5T memory that's in this phone. The T by the way is for turbo and it's a little bit faster than LPDDR5X and probably as good as it's gonna get before we switch over to LPDDR6. In there somewhere, we've got up to a terabyte of UFS 4.1 storage, but before we get to that, I need to disconnect this battery, which I actually should have done a long time ago, and maybe let's talk about it a little bit. For those of you who are eagle-eyed, yes, that is 27.77 watt hours, or as we typically refer to them in sort of mobile devices, 7,500 milliamp hours. That is freaking nuts. Now we just need to get a little bit of alcohol. Woo, a lot of alcohol around the outsides. It's nice that Red Magic gives you these pull tabs to lift out the battery. Wish more manufacturers would do that. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> that is like a lot of the weight of the device. 93 grams, all right, 145 grams. <laughs> Literally, like what, what does that work out to? Like 35 plus percent of the weight of this device <laughs> is that ginormous battery. I'm not even complaining. Like that is 50% more raw capacity than the Pixel 10 and about double the iPhone 17, though it is worth noting that that second one especially is an apples to oranges comparison. Red Magic claims that that giant battery will last up to 34 hours of daily usage. And in our testing, we got just over 22 hours of continuous video playback, about 20% longer than Red Magic's last gen phones. And when you run out of juice, I don't know, sometime tomorrow. The Red Magic 11 Pro boasts up to 80 watt wired and two way wireless charging. In our testing, by the way, we did see it hit the full 80 watts, but only briefly before settling in around 60 watts, which is still gonna give you a zero to 100% charge in 59 minutes on what I would remind you is a massive, massive battery. All right, now that we've got this out, maybe we can get a closer look at what's going on with the SOC situation here. Oh, that's nice, check this out. The headphone jack is on a nice little ribbon daughter board majig. So if you ever need to replace it, it shouldn't be mm, that big of an operation. At least it's doable without replacing a large part of it. Look at that. Oh yeah. And there's stuff that we've taken out that we wouldn't have had to, like this cooling tunnel here. 
I remember finding this out and it, it just, it blew my mind then and it's still a little surprising to me. Just how much of the heat of a phone is expected to be dissipated through the screen. Check this out, here's thermal interface material, right? Between the front of the copper heat spreader that's applied to our SOC here and what is essentially like the screen. Intuitively to me, the screen would have enough cooling to do on its own. In this case, it's 144 Hertz. They claim 1800 nits peak brightness, but we measured well in excess of that, regularly over 2000 nits with a peak of just over 2400 nits. It's AMOLED, so of course you're gonna get great contrast. And probably the most impressive part of it to me is the over 95% screen to body ratio. They've still managed to squeeze in speaker here for your earpiece and then a speaker here. So you get stereo sound. Actually, it's probably time to listen to Crab Rave. I just realized we never actually talked about like the layout of the phone at all. No. So there's the triggers, <laughs> lock button, volume rocker, game mode switch. There's the headphone jack that we discussed before, intake. And then of course, SIM tray, USB type C and a couple microphones for, you know, noise cancellation, that sort of thing. Once again, I don't wanna to get too deep into subjective stuff here like audio quality, but it's clear that it passes the, I don't really need to carry my Bluetooth speaker everywhere test. So make of that what you will. With the teardown out of the way, it's time to show you guys what we measured for performance from this. By all accounts, Qualcomm's claims about the Snapdragon 8 Elite 5 platform having the fastest mobile CPU in the world ring true. So it should come as no surprise that the Red Magic 11 Pro hit the highest scores we've ever seen in our multiple 3D Mark and Geekbench mobile benchmarks, even higher than the other phones that we've tested with the same processor. But I do want to point out again that they may have some fine tuning to do on their fan curve. There's a few more things for us to talk about. The body that we <clears throat> ruthlessly tore apart is IPX8 rated with RGB lighting. And you really want to talk about Mora, David? Yeah, I do. Okay, Mora puts the AI back in anime and waifu. That was it, that was the joke? That was the entire reason you wanted to talk about Mora? There's two AIs in anime waifu. So what do we do with Mora? We chat with Mora. She can help you in game, she's got giving you tips. What is the point of you? <laughs> oh my God, she refers to you as commander by default. Oh my God, she gives her weight. What? <laughs> sure, let's ask. What's your foot size? I don't actually have a physical body or foot size. Okay, but you told me you weigh 54 kilograms. I did mention my weight. That's part of the lore. <laughs> Captain, stop, stop. I surrender. I need to close this now before I get in trouble with my wife. It has Gemini AI integration apparently, which might explain why it's kind of an idiot, but you know who's not an idiot? You. So you'll have no trouble finding the Red Magic 11 Pro at the link in the video description. And if you're not that into Mora, you'll have no trouble removing her. <laughs> Thanks again to Red Magic for sponsoring this video and sending in these units. If you guys want more smartphone content, you should either check out Short Circuit, whose set we're actually borrowing today, our channel where we unbox all kinds of tech, or why not the old school phone water cooling series? We'll throw together a playlist for you. It um, might have been more effective, but it certainly wasn't as elegant or cool.